What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Svanko. Tony's back. Hello, hello. Finally, Tony's back. Yeah, I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, we've been really busy, but Tony's, of course, here to do another deck profile, another signature Tony deck profile. If you guys want to check out his channel, a link will be in the description, as always. I don't upload much anymore, but uh, every once in a while, I still come up with something. This he's format's, he's, unfortunately, he's extra. coming up with a lot, though, but yeah, this format yeah. is tough. It's to, it depends on how well I get to actually like test with it and then how enjoyable is it in this format, which most times it's not. <laughs> oh, that's fair. But in today's video, what deck are we doing, Tony? Uh, we are doing Labyrinth. Okay, I think this deck is really cool and I know you have some like insight as to why you're playing the build the way you're playing it. So I'm just going to let you take over from here. Okay, so starting with the deck profile, we have a card that... So a lot of the cards did come out in Tactical Masters, which by most cases was like... A set with a bunch of interesting things but nothing meta impacting but i thought the labyrinths were very good because of the fact that they're a trap deck that had a balance of the of graveyard effects to at least work even if you didn't have to see your power plays okay so what i mean by that so let's say we have the our one of right now lovely labyrinth of the silver castle this is in german because that's what you do when you go to YCS, you swap everything for foreign cards yes. but lovely labyrinth to translate the fact has a few things first off while on the field uh it's it prevents your opponent from activating monster effects in response to traps. This gives your traps a lot more power because it means they cannot stop it, they cannot effectively negate it, they cannot dodge it with any of your monsters. And in a format full of basically monsters, this makes that a lot more impactful. Uh, second off, if a monster would leave the field by one of my normal trap effects, I can destroy a card on the field or in their hand. Uh, realistically, destroying a monster on the field is okay sometimes. It doesn't target, which is great. But the showing in hand part becomes a lot more relevant in like later game scenarios. And more importantly, while on the field, once per turn, I can target a trap in my normal trap in my graveyard and reset it, but that trap can't be activated unless I control a fiend. This not only allows me to reset removal, which is great because sometimes you just only have this and nothing else, it lets me reset certain floodgate normal traps as well, and that lets me loop them over and over on my opponent's turn to keep shutting them down. So you do want to have, to have the, at least the one copy of, even if one, it's a brick right now, and two, there are better options. Just because of that resetting normal trap allows you to effectively do some crazy lockouts against your opponent, especially against tier, which is kind of what this deck has slightly geared itself towards you. Okay. All right. From there, we then have three Ariana, the Labyrinth Servant. Could not find these in German. Uh, Ariana on summon can do, uh, Ariana on summon has one of two effects, or Ariana has two effects, one of which it has on summon. When summoned, it searches for a Labyrinth card. This searches your deck. This is Stratos. All greater than that. But if a trap monster would leave the field by a normal trap, uh, like a lot of these Labyrinth monsters will say, uh, you can draw a card and then special summon a Fiend from your hand or set a card from your hand to the field. Um, trap card. So there's some funky things you could do with this, but realistically, you're here for the Stratos effect. Uh, you can only use one of those two effects per turn. However, that's fine because you're most likely going to be using the search effect on your turn and then using the draw to special or whatever effect on your opponent's turn. And this kind of helps you unbrick out of the lady lovely labyrinth if you ever open it since she doesn't actually have a way to bring herself out in case you ever open it. Most times you'll be summoning this from deck, but otherwise this will be one of the ways you want to get her out. Uh, then we have to pair with her one Ariane, uh, Servant of the Lovely Labyrinth. So this card here um, can let you discard a normal trap from your hand to then special summon a level four lower Labyrinth or Fiend, I believe. I've only summoned Labyrinth once. Level lower Fiend from your deck. Uh, in theory, you can summon Bear Statue if you're playing it, but oh, it's the, a Dark Bear dark Statue one? and that's yeah. not really good in, this, in any format. Uh, the real metaphor is it searches for your Ariana and Ariana sets you up for the rest of the deck. It, however, is a little more important now than it was before because back in the day when you had your first wave, you barely played this because you didn't want to discard the trap. But it's a lot better now purely because it gives you two level fours that let you overlay into Dweller. Which is really important in this format. Yes. The ability to basically go into this, into this, to set up your traps, but then make a Dweller to make it so that your removal also prevents floating is fantastic. And you do want to have that. Words comes to words, you summon both out, and she has the same uh, draw and special summon effect as Ariane. So at worst comes to worst, you summon this card, you summon both, you set a bunch of traps, and then you draw two on your opponent's turn. Is that how you're summoning your big labyrinth monsters, like the high level ones? Uh, no, this is one of the ways to, but it is not necessarily the primary way. There okay. are ways to summon them directly from the deck, and that's more likely what you're going to do. But in most cases, this is there to access this, and this is there to grab you into the deck pieces that let you access everything else from the deck. That makes sense. All right. So that makes these ones. I uh, wouldn't play more than this, though, because, again, unfortunately, even with the ability to make Dweller, uh, discarding traps, especially if you're not discarding one of the lovely Labyrinth traps or welcome Labyrinth traps, don't do anything in this format and really don't help you. 
From there, we then have two furniture pieces. Uh, these also came from Pack Masters in Wen Chandrelier and, or Chandraglier and Stovey. Both of them have an effect that allows them to send themselves from the field or hand to the graveyard and then send a card from the hand to the grave to then set a welcome labyrinth trap from your, or a labyrinth spell or trap from your deck to the field. This uh, can grab you both your traps, but also some your spells like your field spell as well, which is really nice. Furthermore, when a monster will leave the field by one of your normal traps, they float. This one comes back to your hand. This one comes back to the field. Both of them have some benefits. This one is a body, which lets you do link plays and such like that. This one, however, goes back to your hand, which allows you to feed discard fodder. And that is particularly important because we're also playing one uh, of the clock. Uh, the clock is a little different from these two. Unlike these two, which state that uh, they set traps, this one says you can discard from your hand as a quick effect. Uh, during this turn, you may activate a trap you set this turn. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. This has uses in when you set traps uh, on your opponent's turn, which can happen in certain scenarios, but it also has use to letting you go first with your traps. You can set a trap, discard this card. Furthermore, if a card will be sent from the hand or field, I believe, uh, I've only ever sent it from hand, um, sent from the hand to the graveyard uh, to activate one of your traps, this can add itself back to hand. So it's recycled itself, which is also why you only need one. All these three monsters recycle themselves, and you only essentially need one. And because they're hard ones per turn, you don't want to play more than one of each of them. But once you get these into rotation, they'll continuously be your resource cycle for discard fodder, activating traps, and setting up your plays. That makes sense. Uh, unfortunately, though, they also don't kind of do anything else. And sometimes they also force you to be locked into a graveyard to have their, that recursion going. Which means that in certain scenarios, if you want to play things like D-Shifter, which can be put in this deck, you do take these out because then you're risking banishing them instead. Yep. And lastly, for the new cards and the reason why we're even playing the clock in the deck, we're playing two Lady Labyrinth uh, Lady Labyrinth of the Silver Castle. I was waiting for these because they're nice and pretty. Uh, I'm, uh, there's a third one in the mail. Don't you, First off, you, don't, you should not play three. As it turns out, this card is not as, uh, I guess, ultra consistent as it is, but the two is fine. So Lady Labyrinth has a few specs. First off, uh, if you were to activate a normal trap or a labyrinth effect this turn, at any point that turn, you can special on this card from your hand as a quick effect. Oh. It doesn't activate indirect response, so it's not a trigger effect. As long as you've activated any of the, uh, of the labyrinth effects or that in the, this turn, you can special from hand. What's cool is it kind of works like multi-faker in the same way that if it's in your hand as private knowledge, even if you added it to your hand by an effect of a labyrinth monster, it still meets its valid requirements to special on this hand, even if it wasn't in the hand to see that happen. Oh. What that means is that if I normal summon Ariana and add this to hand, it still can special summon itself immediately to the field. Because at that point, you're, it's private knowledge that you're yes. pouring, for your hand, I mean. Yeah. Okay. So even if you have, let's say, three copies, all three copies, and or two copies in grave or whatever, and you add the third one, even if logically your opponent knows that, unfortunately, there, there's no way it could have been in your hand to see the activation, it still met the requirements to use the effect. That's cool. Yeah, which makes it great in this uh, with Ariana and Ariane because you can go directly from this into this into her, and her, she's crazy. First off, has better stats than um, Lovely Labyrinth here. Uh, 100 more, better defense. This is already, well, is better. Second off, it's special on this defense position, which is fine. But while on the field, it cannot be targeted or store by card effects while you have a set card. Oh, this is just protection. This is a monster with protection. Much better than this one without the protection. Lastly, if you would activate a normal trap, you set another normal trap from your deck. Any normal trap. This, of course, as you've seen with, if you ever watch a scene channel, uh, means you can FTK your opponent. But realistically, it also just means you could set a lot of traps that are blowout when you can. And combined with something like your clock, you can immediately make use of that trap. And that, I think, gives you so many uh, uh, advantages. Of course, again, the 3,000 body is great because then you turn this into a beatdown deck. Combine these two, you have a way, basically, to get into a trap and then reset the trap. And then when you reset that trap and use the trap, you get to, uh, once again, set a new trap. And that creates, like, a board of beaters that not only clears the field, but then also just continuously generates itself. That's actually really cool. And that, like, and that itself is pretty much why. Uh, like I said, the reason why we're not playing three of this, despite how powerful it is, unfortunately, because of the fact that it only triggers off of a Labyrinth Trap or an activation of a normal trap, you cannot get this off turn one unless you open Ariana specifically or yeah. a way into this. Which means that if you open multiple, and you can't use this effect more than once a turn, you're pretty much, they're pretty much bricks in your hand. You open two of them, you can only add some one per turn. And since you're playing traps, and you don't, if you don't want to open Ariana, it means that one of those traps, is, you're going to have to wait a turn just to get this out. Okay. Uh, not so not not so great in that aspect there. So you really want to search the card? Uh, you really want to search the card, or you want to access this with one of your normal traps. And we're going to skip ahead to the traps, because that's probably more important than the monsters. 
One of the ways you can access any of your Labyrinth Monsters is through three Welcome Labyrinth. Welcome Labyrinth on activation special summons a Labyrinth Monster from your deck. This can oh. be a lot of things. This will most likely be Ari Ariane, which will then grab you the Lady Labyrinth to special summon itself because you might already activate Normal Trap or her effect. Um, it also, again, is the way you get out Lovely Labyrinth directly from your deck. Okay. Oh, okay. That's pretty much the general benefit of this card. It's a deck summon. Uh, at the same time, if a monster would leave the field by a normal trap, like all things, this card resets itself. It just can't do so on the turn it was sent to the graveyard. Okay. Uh, with it all, however, hilariously, that means if you discard it off of Ariana, um, it does reset itself on the following turn. You can also reset itself on that turn if you somehow were to get rid of something on that turn. Okay. So it's continuous summoning from deck. Really good. Uh, then for removal, we have the three Compulse. Uh, in this format, Compulse is probably the best trap you got just because it doesn't destroy and you're in a format where unfortunately destruction kind of sucks. Yep. You don't uh, want to be sending stuff to the graveyard yeah. right now. We're still playing the two in Punishment just because Punishment is such a broken trap. Just not against here, sadly. Uh, then we have a few, I guess, which call them Graveyard, but Field Disruptors as well. We're playing two IDP as well as two uh, Terrors of the Overroots. Uh, IDP, you know what it does. Summons a monster back from the grave, banishes two. This is great for dealing with, in this case, tier elements. This one, however, is a little more interesting. You target a monster on the field, a card on the field, and a card in the graveyard. You send the first one, set the other one. Oh, okay. Now, the cool part is, uh, because it sends first and then sets, you don't actually need the graveyard card to remain on the field. If they get rid of the graveyard card in some way, it still sends the monster. Oh, okay. Which is great against, again, right now with Ishizu cards, because they can shuffle back my, their graveyard and fix this. It will not change the fact that I'm still sending a card from the field to the grave. Okay. It sends it, which is the better in terms of non-destruction removal, but again, it allows you to do things like fuck around with the monsters on the field to change them up to monsters in the graveyard or cards on the field. Uh, I have swapped a field spell for a set field spell. I've oh. also, uh, in chain to the activation of a Pellerino, I have sent one of their uh, uh, their uh, Scream and then reset another Pellerino in the grave to just get rid of the Pellerino activating on the so field. So wait, let's get target any card on the field. Any card on the field, any card in the grave. Wow, that's crazy. Granted, some monsters cannot be set, so you can't target a Link monster in the graveyard. Yeah, but, but in a lot of other scenarios, this card is just very flexible removal, but the fact that it doesn't destroy has some benefits on its own. Okay. Then uh, we're playing two, Torrential. Uh, Torrential's not so great. However, in board states against your elements, sometimes you just wait until they do everything and then Torrential them, and that is fine. Unfortunately, you do lose your field. However, if you somehow have another set card, uh, wait, I think there's only your opponent's cards. Oh, the only opponent's cards. Okay, so that one, ignore that. Never mind. <laughs> uh, realistically, though, it's just a card to like reset the field because sometimes you're still playing a trap deck. You do need to equalize before your traps make value. Yep. Then we go into what we call the blowout traps that you set with um, Lady Labyrinth in 2D Barrier and 2 Different Dimension Ground. Uh, you activate either of these against a tier 1 player in any scenario, they're probably passing their turn. Yeah. Uh, you can't make fusions, you can't get, have a graveyard, which is, uh, in most cases, this one kind of is a little more icky just because, once again, we um, can't get our the resource loop happening. However, the only benefit of this one over something like these shifter is the fact that these shifter I have to have no grave, and sometimes that means I can't use these turn 1, but these I can use afterwards. Okay. And uh, the idea is that once you get uh, any activate any trap, you use your Lady Labyrinth to set one of these, and then if you get a clock on rotation, that clock essentially allows you to activate any of these, and now you're good to go. So you can even you get these from directly from the deck to use them immediately if you are opening right. Yep. Uh, we then have a few other ones. We have the one uh, Diomiscus. This is a way to get again banishing removal triggers a clock as well. We have the one trap to grab any trap we want in the deck except for this one sadly because we're only playing one. And then we have the one metaverse because we are playing field spells. Which I assume we're going to get into right now. Yep. Now because we now we go into the spells. Uh, one of the spells we're playing is the La uh, labyrinth labyrinth. This is a terrible name for a card. Yeah. Uh, while in the field, it gives all your Welcome Labyrinth Normal Traps an additional effect. Where after you've done everything with that uh, Welcome Labyrinth, and then pops a card on the field, non-targeting. Seems pretty decent. Okay. It just turns your deck summoner into removal. It works great with the next trap coming out next set, which actually does about the same thing. So it turns all your uh, some uh, advantage traps into removal. Important, if you were to activate a Normal Trap, however, that a non-Labyrinth uh, Normal Trap, you summon a Fiend from your hand or grave. Oh, wait, that's really cool. Yeah, and this is part of the reason why we can we can play just one lovely labyrinth, even if we made like it gets destroyed, because this is one of the ways to revive this card from the graveyard at any point. It also revives things like Ariana, which is great as well. So this card has benefit at the, at the singular copy. With that being said, with the lack of welcome labyrinth traps currently in the game, you do not, I don't think you need to play two, even though... There are some benefits to when this card gets removed as well. But at the end of the day, this trap just provides nominal benefits to your deck. Yep. But the other fields we're playing, the reason why I'm playing the Metaverse, we're playing the Mystic Plan. 
Oh. Alright, what do you expect? This you is have to. Like if, if if we're in this format, at least I can turn off everything that way. And we're playing a trap deck, so sometimes we don't even need monsters. Yep. Uh, from there, we then have, this is where things get a little weird, we have some runic cards. We have Flashing Fire and Freezing Chains. Uh, there's two benefits to this. One, this gives you something that you can do on your turn to equalize the field a little bit before you set five and pass to your opponent. One destroys monsters on the field, one negates effects, which can be useful because sometimes my, your opponent makes a Zeus or a removal on your turn and you just turn them off this way. The other aspect, in, in, and since we're speaking removal, it allows you to summon runic X deck monsters like Hogan, which if they attempt to feel new with you, at least allows you to then basically replace them and affect it. And that saves your field. So like Lightning Storm, Duster, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. It's just protection. It is just, it feels like they're basically better chalices. They're yep. better uh, quick play spells at the current moment. And even you, though you skip your battle phase, you probably weren't winning by skipping your battle phase anyway. Yeah. You're winning, you will beat down your opponent eventually. But you're most likely winning because you can outgrind them to like a non-placeable like placeable situation. That makes sense. Uh, and then lastly, three prosp. Uh, fix the consistency. Honestly, this is where, again, this card can be these shifters. This can be something else. Uh, I never fall to a situation where I needed the consistency to play the game, but it does have some benefits just being to fix semi unplayable hands. You do need to see at some point one of your Labyrinth monsters. So if you don't see the trap or any of your Arianas or any of your ladies, there is some oopsie doodles there, and you don't need your entire extra deck just because how little you access it. So this card has just a place for now just for extra consistency. Just more copies of uh, the level four. Yeah. Ariana. Yeah. Uh, any copies of Ariana, Lady, you just need to see what either the Welcome Lavin Trap, the Ariana, or the uh, Lady. Okay. One of those, any of those starters to get your hand going. Hell, you can even see Furniture, and that actually might work as well, because the Furniture gets you into the trap. Yep. And that's part of the reason why this deck is, I think, very good. You don't need, I guess, a specific hand. Any card kind of does it. Your traps become monsters. Your monsters become traps. So no matter what you do, you have the pieces necessary. It, however, comes down to the fact that, unfortunately, in a format full of floaters, that uh, value you get out of clearing your opponent's monsters just does not exist. Yep. Uh, going to the extra deck, we have the One Dweller. This is the only rank four we're playing because we just aren't making rank fours a lot. Uh, from there, the actual extra deck monsters you'll be making. We're playing the muck, One Muckcracker because it can bring back fiends. Oh, right. Yeah. Nice. We're playing the One... Um, Almiraj, sometimes, and this is really awkward, I have normaled one of these uh, furnitures and linked it away, just oh, to no. get in the grave. That's fair. Not the greatest. Uh, we have the one uh, five-headed dragon, just for a big thing that we can, uh, so we can send for punishment. The one live twin sunny, a lot of these will be side deck cards that we just never actually have used in the decks, which is why Pots works so well. We have the one uh, Omega, something we send with punishment, but we also are playing, in some cases, the ultimate slayer in the extra deck. Or, or side, side deck, deck. and yeah. that's just something to send for the synchro targets. The one Hoogan, the one uh, Jiri, one's for a little bit of, a, I guess, defensive scenarios, one's more for the removal scenario. Uh, we can play the new one, but the re because we are skipping our battle phase, it really doesn't do anything. That's fair. Uh, two Entis, uh, worst comes to worst, you're popping things with this. One Garuda for the draw, if you ever want to do, uh, play that. Uh, side note, uh, if you really wanted to, instead of the props, uh, you can play a small package of three Nadir's Servant and a Ecclesia. Yep. It's just fine, if, especially with the extra deck that you're playing. And then for two power targets, we have the one Dragon's Tapalia and the one uh, Mud Dragon. Yeah, so a lot of these extra decks is just post side deck. What yes. your opponent can, what just because, can and that's the kind of thing, like you're also not relying on your side deck, so a lot of the cards that you're pulling with side to like ruin matchups like Tier Moments kind of don't work against you. This deck is, again, uh, has a very good flexibility, and that's why I think it has potential. But until, like, I guess we get the next few support for Labyrinth, we're kind of still playing an uphill battle. But it definitely, I think, compared to a lot of the options right now in the format, this is one of the better ones that you can go with. All right. Well, thank you, Tony, for the deck profile. I appreciate it. Very well said. Very well explained, actually. I think this deck's really cool. And I feel like even if it's not going to be this format, even though this is built for this format, uh, there's going to be a format where this deck is good. I just I just feel it. To be honest, though, I just built this because it was pretty. And it is pretty, man. Those so starlights and CRs are so nice. Yeah, like even like these cards just look nice. And honestly, if you're if you're not gonna play, if this format's so unfun, you might as well at least look good doing it. That's fair. All right, so make sure you guys like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy. Make sure to check out Tony's channel. And with that, Spanko and Tony. Uh, I don't know. Peace.